The service for Holy Communion begins on page 67 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. O Almighty Lord and everlasting God, vouchsafe we beseech thee to direct sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments, that through thy most mighty protection both here and ever we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Propers appointed for the third Sunday in Advent are found on page 93 and on page 90 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And with the Spirit. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at thy first coming did send thy messenger to prepare the way before thee, grant that the ministers and stewards of thy mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready thy way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at thy second coming to judge the world we may be, be found an acceptable people in thy sight, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost now and ever. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> the epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the first epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians, beginning at the first verse. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of a man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing against myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts and then shall every man have praise of God. Here endeth the epistle.
Holy Gospel is written in the 11th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning with the second verse. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto him, Go and show John again these things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. As they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, what went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The Gospel of our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, begotten of the Father, from whom all things are in heaven and earth, and in him was life, and the life was the light of men. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, Please be seated. Well, good morning. Welcome. Glad to have all of you here on this third Sunday in Advent. I especially welcome those visiting with us today. We hope you'll either sign the guest register located in the narthex, or if you prefer, there are some visitor cards in the pew back in front of you. You can fill that out and then place that in the offering plate as it comes around a little bit later in the service. We do invite you to come over after the service next door to Lunt Hall for our uh, fellowship time. We have coffee and donuts. Uh, and then, of course, we have Sunday school for all ages after that. As a reminder, the children fifth grade and under will be directly across the parking lot in Miller Hall uh, preparing for the Epiphany play, which will be coming up on uh, the 12th night, which we're, uh, we're going to have here on uh, January the 6th. We'll have more about that uh, in the weeks to come, but I hope you'll put that on your calendar. It's going to be a great uh, event that night. Uh, this, uh, oh, before I move on, thanks to everyone who showed up yesterday to help green the church. 
a lot of work and so thank you to everyone who came out for that it, it was uh, it looks great and uh, we're, we're thankful for your help uh, looking ahead this week a l- few little adjustments in the schedule uh, note uh, we have a mistake in the bulletin there will be no even song on Wednesday night uh, so do take note of that no even song in Bible study Wednesday night and then on Friday morning no men's Bible study we do have ladies Bible study on Tuesday but no men's Bible study this week also coming up on Thursday, it's the Feast of St. Thomas. So I invite you to come out on Thursday for a special noon Eucharist. Of course, we also have our Wednesday noon Eucharist as usual. A big week this week, of course. Uh, Friday night is our Lessons and Carols um, service. <clears throat> we have uh, 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 some members of the Dallas Symphony Orchestra coming out for that evening. Of course, our choir and Uh, Musicians have been working hard and prepped for this. It's a beautiful service. Hope you'll plan on coming out. Hope you'll invite someone to come with you. We do have some little postcards back in the narthex and over in the parish hall. Take one of those, invite a neighbor, invite a friend. We hope to fill the church up that night. Uh, But that begins with a pre-concert at 6.30, and then the service begins at 7. So I know you'll want to be here for that. And then, of course, there's a reception following after with lots of goodies uh, next door. Next Sunday morning, take note that we'll have one service at 10 a.m. It's Advent 4. It's not Christmas Eve until the Eve, right? Remember that. So next Sunday morning, Advent 4, for you 9 o'clockers, you get to sleep in a little bit next week. Come in a little bit later. Uh, so that's 10 o'clock next, uh, next Sunday morning. And then, of course, on Christmas Eve, we have two services. We have the 5.30 service. Uh, And then, which will be processing the the creche, will be set up at the 530 service. And then at the later service, we're doing something a little bit different this year. Beginning at 10 o'clock, we'll have a carol sing. So you can come, we'll sing a number of Christmas carols. And then at 1030, the uh, cathedral service will begin. Uh, So that'll be on Christmas Eve. And then if you don't like coming out in the evening, we've got a service on Christmas Day at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, You're welcome to come for that. Of course, after Christmas, there are a number of feast days, so mark your calendar. We will have a few changes in the schedule that next week with the daily offices and so forth, but we'll announce that next week. But there are a number of feast days for you to come out. Also remember that on the 31st, which will be the Sunday after Christmas, we will also have just one service at 10 a.m. So the next two Sundays, 10 o'clock services, only one on those two days. I'm sure I'm missing something, so make sure you look at your bulletin. Lots of things going on, but a a great time of the church year. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week that we can pray for? Um, Okay, let's turn to page 597. I know we have some others out. uh, We have some others out uh, joining us online with birthdays, so we'll pray in the plural. We have some more. praying together. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be, keeping them unspotted from the world. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Congratulations. Children are dismissed for Children's Chapel. Let us stand and sing our sermon hymn, number 311, Rise Up, O Men of God.
And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Well, throughout the Advent season, we've been talking about the fact that our appointed scripture lessons point us in two directions. They point us to the past as we think about the first Advent of our Savior. Hence, during this season, we prepare to commemorate and celebrate the Nativity of our Lord and Savior. But our lessons also point into the future, calling us to prepare for Christ's second coming to judge the living and the dead. The common denominator between the first and second advents are the th is the theme of preparation. We live between the first and second advents. The kingdom of God broke in to this world at his arrival, but its consummation awaits his second appearance. As we seek to live our lives in this world, awaiting the fullness of the kingdom, we continually battle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. We are not yet what we shall be. But God has given us certain gifts to strengthen and guide us along the way. Last week, we talked about the gift of Holy Scripture. This week, we will focus on the ministers of the church as God's gift to help us grow in grace and to be ready to meet Christ when he returns. In considering this truth, we begin with our gospel lesson, which reminds us of the ministry of John the Baptist at the first advent of Christ. John is referenced in the opening words of the collect for the day, which says, O Lord Jesus Christ, who at thy first coming didst send thy messenger to prepare thy way before thee. The words here echo one of several prophecies about John the baptizer from the Old Testament. For instance, Isaiah prophesied John's role when he said, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. John the Baptist was this messenger who was sent before Jesus to prepare his way. Or as, as it says in other contexts, John was the friend of the bridegroom who came to announce to the bride, meaning the church, that her groom would soon arrive. John the Baptist's ministry to Israel was to, to prepare them for the arrival of their Messiah. He came preaching repentance, calling all of Israel to forsake their sinful ways and to return to the Lord. And furthermore, they were to mark their repentance by undergoing a baptism in the Jordan River, signifying the washing away of their sins. This ministry which God gave John became crystal clear one day when he was out baptizing. It happened that Jesus himself came to the Jordan to be baptized. And in a flash of insight, John pointed at Jesus and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. In one pregnant phrase, the prophet sees the whole purpose of Christ's first advent. Jesus Christ was the sinless, spotless Lamb of God who made the ultimate sacrifice to take away the sins of the world. He bore our sins in his own body on the cross. So if you think about it, John had a ministry of word and sacrament. He reminded Israel of the covenant which God had made with them and urged them to walk in faithfulness to that covenant. But he also baptized them and pointed them to the true Passover lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. In a sense, he pointed them towards a new exodus which Jesus would lead not out of slavery in Egypt, but out of slavery to sin and death. It's at this point where we can consider the epistle and how it fits with this theme. 
The epistle points in the other direction towards the future. It's about preparing God's people under the new covenant to be ready to meet Jesus when he comes again. This is precisely what the second part of our collect points to, where it says, quote, grant that the ministers and stewards of thy mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready thy way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at thy second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in thy sight. Of course, this begs the question, in what way do the ministers of the church prepare us for the second advent? The lessons lead us to understand that the ministers of Christ, preeminently priests, are to pattern their ministry after that of John the Baptist, hence the word likewise. That begins with proclaiming God's word. God's ministers have the role of making known what he has revealed in scripture and to call every person to repent and believe the gospel. This includes, of course, pointing out where mankind has gone wrong in disobedience to God's commands. But like John, we do not stop there. We do not just expose the problem. We offer the solution. We are called to point mankind in the right way. More specifically, God's ministers call upon everyone to embrace Jesus Christ as the savior of mankind. Like the baptizer, we point people to Jesus and say, behold the lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Ministers of the gospel also have been entrusted with the sacraments as the means by which God's forgiveness comes to mankind. This is why St. Paul refers to us as stewards of the mysteries of God in our epistle. The word mysteries here refers to the sacraments. Like John, we call everyone to come first to the river to wash away their sins. Not the river Jordan, but the river of Christ meaning holy baptism. And after that, we have brought God's people through the water. We then point them to the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And that's found in the Holy Eucharist. It's no accident that we sing those words of John in our liturgy right before we come to receive Holy Communion. We partake of his body and blood and are made one with him. The benefits of his redeeming work are brought to bear upon our sinful lives, and we are made clean and whole. So during Advent, we're reminded of our need to prepare to meet Christ when he comes again. To that end, God has given us what we need to be prepared. This includes the ministers of Christ who are to proclaim the gospel, calling everyone to turn from their sins and to receive God's grace. These ministers are stewards of the holy mysteries, the sacrament of baptism and the Holy Eucharist, whereby we receive God's forgiveness. So during this Advent season, and really throughout our lives, let us not forsake the gifts of God. Rather, let us embrace them so that we will be ready to meet Christ when he comes again in glory. Amen. And now let us remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive.
Our service continues on page 74 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. You who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, in the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. <coughs> so God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty <clears throat> that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying,
All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice <clears throat> until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, <clears throat> and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. <clears throat> And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. <laughs> Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, 
and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
for those joining us by live stream and unable to receive Holy Communion, a prayer of spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of thy church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I present to thee my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to thee. And since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to thee and embrace thee with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate thee from me. May I live and die in thy love. Amen. service continues on page 83 of your prayer books. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.